Hi there. So here goes a new video about doing Bing modeling with FreeCAD. And this one won't be really about FreeCAD itself, but about Blender. So we'll see how to do rendering of a Beam model we have in FreeCAD. This is our pavilion, Barcelona pavilion uh, uh, model that we know. Um, so one easy way to do rendering in FreeCAD is to use the render workbench, which you install via the add-on manager here. And then you have this render workbench here. And you have four different render engines that you must install separately. And then you basically create a new project. As it works the same way as TextDraw. You make a project and then you, you make views of your objects. But that's not what I will show today because it's really simple and it doesn't allow you to tweak anything. It just throws your model, creates some default materials and throws your model into the render. And um, here we want something a little bit better. So for uh, to render in our model in FreeCAD, we can export it to a format that uh, Blender likes. Collada or OBG J are, are good options because it gives really good results. But uh, we also now have a proper importer uh, for FreeCAD files to allow Blender to import FreeCAD files directly. Um, check the address, the, the URL uh, of this plugin uh, below this video and you can just download the zip or press the row button and save the page as and you must save it as a Python file. Just give it any name and make sure it ends with .py so it's saved as a Python script. And that's it. Actually, you can use this file name as well. But you can basically name it the way you want. Here is our our Python file. And to uh, add it as a Blender plugin, you must save it to the Blender plugins folder. Uh, if you, It depends on the platform on Windows, a bit different. But um, a quick Google to how to install a Blender plugin will, will tell you basically how to do it. This is Blender. The, this is a new 2.8 version of Blender. Uh, it may look a bit complex at first, but I, I guarantee you Blender is a fantastic asset. And if you're into Beam and into open source, uh, learn it. Um, You'll thank me later. Uh, it's it's a really a perfect companion to 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 FreeCAD. It does all the contrary. Uh, you can change the interface style if you don't like it. Uh, you can just uh, give individual color to but to anything in in Blender. Uh, but this is the new default theme theme now. And Blender is really uh, the, the contrary of FreeCAD. Uh, it's a fast application, and uh, uh, once you have copied the, the imp import file, uh, this is where you find it. Uh, you must be sure to set this part here to um, your FreeCAD.so uh, library or dot, um, .pyd if you're on Windows. This is all explained there, uh, but uh, if your FreeCAD is, uh, I don't need to do it on mine because um, FreeCAD is already added to the default uh, Python path. Um, so once this is installed, we can just open a FreeCAD file directly in, in Blender. And it takes a little bit, a little while because it's all Python. It's a little bit slow. And yes, I was, as I was explaining, uh, Blender does the contrary as FreeCAD. Uh, as much as in FreeCAD you you model precise and slowly things, in Blender you can go really fast, a bit like SketchUp. One once you know it, and the, the rendering capabilities are. are 
incredible. So here I'm deleting the default objects that were there just before my import because I won't need them. I'll give a very very quick overview of Blender here, uh, but uh, I will cover just a little bit. Little, I will just scratch the surface. So um, there's there are tons of learning materials, especially uh, geared toward architecture and and beam on on the net. And um, so Blender has these these are the layers basically that are called collections in Blender, and this part of the screen. Um, is the same is the property views the same as this one in in Blender uh, in FreeCAD basically. So you have these different uh, sections there. Uh, this is the rendering section. You have three default rendering engines. EV is the new one. Cycles is the best one. But the EV one is really interesting, but because it's really really fast and it works directly inside the 3D viewport. We have these different modes. You can change the lighting here. But I will set a proper, our own background lighting. The Blender interface is all splittable like this. You have those panels and then if you go to a corner, you can just push another subdivision. And each subdivision has this type here. Uh, and you can change uh, these, these, those two are 3D viewports. I will change to shader editor. There I can edit a uh, word shader and material shaders. I go to my work and use nodes here. <coughs> and then I can edit my background here. And you see the, these are nodes that this all color code. So it's quite easy. I will add an environment texture which can which can be a normal jpeg texture but also an hdri texture which is interesting because these textures have very high lighting capacity so they can be used as to, to light up your scene and you see there are like uh, mirror balls and um, so they wrap the scene fully, 360 degrees. And you see this lights quite well, a bit strong maybe. We'll soften it a little bit. You see that it doesn't uh, project shadows. The EV uh, engine is a very simple one. So there are a lot of things it doesn't do, but um, we can fix that by adding manually uh, sunlight. We'll turn this on so to see better. Y you can manipulate your objects directly in the 3D view. In earlier versions of Blender, they were like, um, enabled by default. No, they are not anymore. But it's quite easy. Blender is really made to, to be used with with uh, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, so once you, you manipulate well the keyboard shortcuts, uh, you can really forget about these screen widgets. And then you go really, really fast with, with Blender. I'm trying now to make my sunlight Uh, basically match the position of the sun in in the in the in the background image there is something strange that it looks like the shadow is not uh, not going all the way down it's like it's only affecting a portion of my model No, no, I don't know. Probably some setting is like here in the shadow limiting something, but that's good enough for now. Also, I'm also pretty new to EV, so there are a couple of settings I'm not sure yet how they work. 
ambient occlusion is a cool thing to add. It basically puts some sh shading in, in the model where two objects are very close one to each other. So one object is like shading its neighbors. And um, <coughs> it's not really shadowy, but it's a quick effect that gives a bit of depth to, to quickly gives a bit of depth to your scene. Another one that I like much is this bloom setting, which like uh, explodes the, the lighter areas of your, of your view. And um, so this gives quite a lot of mood already. So with just a couple of quick effects, you already kind of create some dramatic effect to, to your scene. And that's the great thing about EV, that in just a couple of settings, you already create a scene with, with mood. Even without, without configuring textures and materials, you see that we didn't look at materials yet. Here you see that these windows have has two materials, uh, like in like in our FreeCAD model, and it took the wall material, the same material as this wall. This is because uh, the exporter exports everything with the same color to the same material in Blender. So to fix this, if we wanted a different material, we should have used another color uh, in FreeCAD. But I will leave it like this now, it's not so important. And this glass, this this principal um, shader is the all the new all-in-one shader in in Blender. You saw in that there are several others, but this one the, the big advantage is that it's usable in both um, cycles and EV. So it's an all-in-one material that can do about anything. It can be used to make metals and glasses and just about anything. And it works in both engines. So our FreeCAD importer just creates principal materials for everything and it's quite convenient to work with it. You see that the same thing that you see in the shader panel here are in this property as well. So you basically don't need to open the panel above. And this is to make shadow transparent. And you see that it begins to be quite good and we didn't almost touch anything about materials. This material here, which is used for structures, uh, I will make it like reflexive. Like it was a very highly reflexive metal. And you see this here is a reflection, but it's like a default reflection of something, some image text, built-in image texture. And if you enable this, it will do real reflections. This is a bit too much. It looks like our building is fully in inox metal. So I'll give a bit of roughness to mitigate that. This looks quite cool. And we have quite a nice scene already. And um, if you want to make a quick render that like gives some cool impression uh, instead of a render that is, that is um, very realistic, uh, this is good enough. I cannot render an image. Yeah, of course, I need a camera to be able to render an image. Uh, so let's add the camera. And I will make my camera match our view. Uh, this blend, this new blender, uh, they changed about a lot of things, so it's pretty hard to find yourself. Uh, where is it? No. There is it. This will make our camera match the view, the current view. So I'll adjust it man manually. You see that using keyboard shortcuts, it's really faster to, to work. 
in Blender. It's really made to for that. Um, but they make made quite a lot of effort in this last version to make it easier for new people to to grasp Blender and to learn it. And so we are launching a render window. It takes a little bit because I think the default um, render sampling is quite high. So it gives better quality. Yeah, there it is. But it takes a little bit longer. And this you can save to an image file. So that's basically it. Um, thanks to the fact that we used a principal shader, we can just switch the engine. And everything works the same way. You see that Cycles works very differently, but it takes a longer time. You see this path tracing sample count going up there. And uh, um, it takes a longer time to render, but uh, the quality is just um, much better when, when it's finished this, uh, this process. Um, you see the difference that, uh, for example, one, uh, one part of the screen, that does, one part of, of the model doesn't reflect lights on the other parts. In cycles, um, everything does. Uh, you can do a lot of more things. You can add texture to, to your materials. Uh, you see that the texture can give a color and it's color coded, so it's quite easy to figure out what goes where. And um, so I just added concrete, but it's not properly mapped to the object. So I need a texture coordinate. Let's try this. No, probably we need to change the mapping coordinates. Where is it? Here it is. So we can change the scale of our texture here. No effect. I think it uh, okay now it's appearing of course it's projected vertically so we need a box model and here it comes finally so blender is quite complex but once you learn a few tricks with it you don't really need to learn it all all the tricks that the interface and the, the, the program can do which which are a lot uh, you can just play with the things you know and you go discovering step by step. It's a complex application, but you can you can start with with um, a smaller set of tools and, and go expand as, as as you as you need it. So that's basically it. That's basically how it works. And um, there's plenty more material on the net to learn these things. And um, that's it. Hope you liked.